Hey there, and welcome to another Technology Paul video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a technology that is both new and kind of old now. Satellite radio has been around since the early 2000s, and now most vehicles come equipped with satellite radio capabilities. But it's not such a novel concept anymore, especially because there's so many ways to listen to music, especially with the popularity of streaming services nowadays. Some folks just don't see the point in satellite radio when you can just as easily connect your phone to your vehicle and listen to your own curated playlists. There used to be two big competitors early on, Sirius and XM, but truth be told, it didn't take long for them to realize they could have a much greater reach if they just merged together. So they did, and they became Sirius XM. Satellite radio has struggled to find its place in a world with so many mediums. However, they've quietly become quite popular with upwards of 43 million subscribers. So the question is, is it really worth it in 2020 when we have so many options? Well, let's find out. Before we jump in, I'll just remind you that if you're enjoying the video at any point, feel free to click that like button. It really helps the channel. So let's start from the top. Why am I standing in front of my vehicle? Well, the most popular way to listen to satellite radio is in your car. I'll tell you more about my experience in a minute, but first, what does Sirius XM offer? Well, that depends on the plan you choose and how much you're willing to pay. The all access plan offers over 350 channels, all the sports, including NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, NCAA, PGA, and NASCAR, as well as news, talk shows, and comedy. That'll cost you $21.99 per month. With a select plan, you get the same types of things, except just a bit less. You miss out on the NASCAR coverage, as well as some of the talk shows like Howard Stern. That's $16.99 per month. Then there's mostly music. It offers 65 plus music channels available in my vehicle and online. I have found that this is kind of the perfect option for me. What I care about is the music. In terms of talk shows, I prefer podcasts. In terms of sports, I prefer to just watch them on TV. So for me, having lots of music options is the best. The plans I mentioned so far are for vehicles equipped with satellite radio, although you can also listen online. But the next two plans are only for online listening and can't be used inside the car. So the Premier plan has over 300 channels and has their integration to Pandora, the music streaming service that Sirius purchased back in 2019. It allows you to create and personalize streaming stations of your own. This feature is also available on the all access in-car plan. Then there is the essential plan. Again, has the same types of things, but a little bit less, and it doesn't have the Pandora integration, and it's just $8 a month. So you've probably figured it out already, but there's a few different ways you can listen to Sirius XM. The main and most popular is to listen in your vehicle. Most vehicles made within the last decade have a built-in receiver to get it directly onto your stock radio. However, Sirius XM does offer options for older cars where you can get a vehicle kit that allows you to install an antenna on your car and a display that you can mount on your dashboard. Now, you can also listen through your browser, through the Sirius XM app, or through smart speakers like Google Home or Amazon Echo. Let's go through each of these. First of all, let's hop in the Jeep. The experience will somewhat vary depending on what kind of stock stereo you have in your car. However, the functionality will be the same. In the vehicle, you can browse through channels. You can simply turn the dial to switch stations or you can browse by category. You can also select favorite stations so that you can quickly move between your pre-selected favorite stations. And you can also select favorite artists or favorite songs and be alerted whenever that artist or song 
is playing across any of the channels that you have. This all provides a pretty nice upgrade over traditional radio. However, there is one important downfall to satellite radio. You need to have a good link between the satellite signal and your vehicle. So going through a tunnel, it's not going to work. In a park cave, not going to work. Wanna listen in your garage? Not likely. Heavy overcast? Well, it does often work, but you will get occasional cutouts. Overall, this doesn't have a major impact on my ability to enjoy the service, but it's just a standard operating rule when dealing with satellite signals. You can also listen on the web or the mobile app, though I have to admit, I just started doing this recently. On the app, you can basically do the same types of things, but you can also send it through Chromecast if you wanna listen on a compatible speaker or display. So that's really, really handy. And finally, you can also listen on your smart speakers. It's pretty much exactly what you would expect. You simply ask your assistant to play a certain channel. It's just another great way to get some background music going while you're cooking dinner or cleaning the house. Hey Google, play Hits 1. Okay, here's Sirius XM Hits 1 on Sirius XM. All right, let me provide some final thoughts. I absolutely love the streaming services that are available these days, and I practically live on Spotify when I'm working or hanging out at home. But I do think Sirius XM shines when in the vehicle. It has the same traditional convenience as radio, but with more selection and without the constant ads. You don't get the same level of personalization that you would with Spotify, for example, because you don't have the opportunity to listen to your own playlists or mixes that are made for you. But overall, I think satellite radio is a big winner with one major catch. It's way overpriced. The plans cost too much for the value they provide. I'm paying $10.99 per vehicle, plus they tack on a $2 charge for service fees, which brings me up to about $13 plus tax. I personally think they're charging too much since you can get a lot more from the streaming services for less. Now, I am going to continue to pay for their service for the time being, but if there's ever a time where I need to tighten our budget, satellite radio will be one of the first things to go. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed, please click that like button for me and don't forget to subscribe for more Technology Paul.